So hi everyone, welcome back to Primer's Classroom. The purpose of this class is to help you to cover the entire syllabus and I'm going to be taking you biology, physics and chemistry. Today I'm going to be dealing with biology and this will be the first class of the syllabus. At the end of everything today we're going to be solving a whole lot of questions and I'm sure that when you face exams on this topic you'll be able to answer them right. So let's get started and let's get into it. So what are the things we're going to be talking about today? We're going to have what we call the introduction to biology. We're going to have the different branches of biology. I'm going to be telling you about the introduction to cell. We're going to talk about organization of life. We we'll talk about the cell theories and the historical parts of the cell theories. Then after that, we we'll look at the cell structures and the functions of the components of the cell. So to start with, when you are studying biology, the purpose of studying biology is to study life itself. If you're bothered about how your body functions, then the best subject for you to study is biology. So if you want to know more about yourself, know about living organisms around you, know about all the things that have life around you, then you need to study biology. So what is biology? Biology is defined as the study of life. Biology is derived, coined from two Greek words, which is bios, which means life, and logos, which means to study. So biology is defined as the study of life. So if you're interested more in biology, there are different branches of biology where you can practice. First is what we call the zoology. So zoology is the study of animals. We have what we call botany. Botany is the study of plants. We have what we call microbiology. Microbiology is the study of microorganisms, the minute organisms that cannot be seen with the naked eye. We have what we call entomology. Maybe you love insects, you love to pick insects around. No more about insects then that is what we call entomology. So the study of insects is entomology. Or are you the type that like birds? You like to see the way birds fly? You want to select some birds and study them? Then you need to study what we call ornithology. So ornithology is the study of birds. Then when you are talking about parasitology, parasitology is the study of parasites. You want to know how your body function, then you are studying physiology. So that is called physiology. Physiology is the study of how the body functions. Or you probably want to know more about your kidney, your liver, all the internal organs, then we have what we call anatomy. So then there's another aspect of biology that is called mycology. Mycology is the study of fungi. Then you also have another aspect called virology. Virology is the study of viruses. So these are branches of biology. So now if you look at yourself, you must have been made for something. Have you ever thought about it? From your mother's womb, the zygote, till you grow to where you are now. What could have been going on? How were you made? So this will take us to introduction to cell. So cell is defined as the basic building block of life. So every life is built from cell. Every living organism is built from cell. Before you build a house, you need some series of blocks that will be arranged in forming a house. So cell is defined also as the basic building structure of life. So the basic and functional units of life is cell. We're going to be talking more about cell as we move on. So how did cell now make you who you are? Then that is what we talk about in organization of life. Some organisms exist at the cellular level. Just that cell is what forms them. But look at you, you are so special and your life has to be specialized. So in a way, there is an organization your life follows. And this is what we call organization of life. So several cells will come together to form what we call tissues. Tissue come together to form organs. Then organs come together to form system. Then system comes together to form you. Let me take you back to the beginning. So when you have tissues, tissues are collection of similar cells performing similar functions. Organs are collections of similar tissues performing similar functions. Systems are collection of similar organs performing similar functions. So when you're talking about cells, for example, you have your erythrocytic cell, which is the red blood cell. You have your white blood cell. All of these cells come together to form what we call the blood tissue. There are four major tissues we have, which are the epithelial tissues, the muscle tissues, the nervous tissue, and the connective tissues. So several other tissues are categorized under these four major types. Another thing you have is these tissues will now come together to form organs. So for example, you have your kidney, you have your heart, which is an organ, you have your eye. All of these tissues come together to form the organ. Then the organs will form together to form the system. So from there, you have your skeletal system, 
the transport system, the excretory system, digestive system, nervous system. So several organs are the ones that make up all of this system. We're going to be picking them one after the other and study them as we move on in biology. This is an introduction to the class. So then this system now comes to form you, which we call the organism. So now you are formed from the basic unit of life, which was cell. Although some organisms can survive at the cellular level, those organisms are called unicellular organisms. So they are made up of just a single cell. But some other organisms are made up of several cells. Those ones are called multicellular organisms. So let's now look at what we call the cell theory and the history of the cell. So let me first tell you the three cell theories before going on to the history or now we came about the cell theory. So what are the cell theory? The cell theory says that the cell is the building block of life. That is number one. Number two says that the cell... So you, you know one thing I told you about the other classes? This is a class where you can control me. You can pause the video to write. You can take the video back to copy whatever you want to copy. You can hold on for me, then write whatever I say. So I'm, I'm listing out the cell theories now. The first one is that the cell is the building block of life. So number two is that all living organisms are made up of cell. Number three is that a cell comes from pre-existing cell. Before there's another cell, there must have been cell that existed. Now, how did we come about these theories? It was dated back to the discovery of the microscope. When the microscope was, was discovered, several scientists were able to do a lot of work on, on living organisms. So, but I'm just going to summarize all the work of these scientists that are important for the purpose of your exam. So in 1665, the first scientist that discovered the cell was Robert Hooke, and he observed a dead cock cell. So they can ask you, what did Robert Hooke observe? A dead cock cell. So he took a slice of the dead cock cell, and he observed it under the microscope. Then he discovered that this dead cock cell was made up of repeating units of boxes. And these repeating units of boxes, he called it cell for simplicity. So in some years after, some other scientists, which are German scientists, one is a botanist and one is a zoologist. The botanist is called Matthias Schleiden. So Matthias Schleiden observed different plants and stated that all plants are made up of cells. And also there is a, another scientist called Theodor Schwann. It's a zoologist. And zoologist Theodor Schwann also observed several animals and concluded that all animals are made up of cells. So if you start from Robert Hooke, Robert Hooke observed the dead cock cell, and he says that these cock cells have repeating units of blocks, and these repeating units of blocks is what we call cells. So he now call it the building blocks of life. Then other scientists like Theodore Schwann and Matthias Schleiden discovered that cell animals are made up of cells, plants are made up of cells, so they now are to conclude that all living organisms are made up of cells. I hope you are following. So another thing was that there was a scientist called Rudolf Wackel. Rudolf Wackel, they had to look at it that where does cell co even come from? So if man is, if animals are made up of cells, plants are made up of cells, then how did this cell even form in the first place? So they had to conclude that cell must have come from a pre-existing cell. So this was credited to Rudolf Wackel. Although there are a lot of controversies about the scientific researches and all of those things. But this is not the video for that. We need to move faster to cover the things we need to do that we have some things to do with our syllabus. Do not forget, Matthias Sliding in 1838 discovered that all plants are made up of cells. Theodor Schwann in 1839 published that all animals are made up of cells. So those are the contribution of the scientists to the structure of the cell. So, so now let's look at the cell structures. We already said animals are made up of cells. Plants are made up of cells. Okay, how does this cell even look like? According to Robert Hooke, Robert Hooke only observed the dead cell, so he was not able to see the things that are present inside the cell. So let's look at how the cell looks like. So later, the cell was discovered to be made up of a living cells, which we call the protoplasm. And this protoplasm is made up of cytoplasm and the nucleus. So your nucleus plus cytoplasm makes up what we call the protoplasm. So let's describe the things that are present in the cell. These things that are present in the cells are called organelles. So we are going to take them one after the other. But I would like to start from the center of the cell, then take it to the outside for you to understand it better. So the first organelle to look at is what we call the nucleus. So the nucleus is double membrane. It has the nuclear membrane surrounding it. 
The nucleus is the most conspicuous organelle in the cell. That means the obvious, the one you can easily see when you carry out staining technique on the cell. So now, this nucleus contains two major parts, which are the chromatins and the nucleolus. The chromatins are tiny structures of DNA or chromosomes that are present within the nucleus. Then we also have the nucleolus. The nucleolus is the fluid structure inside the nucleus. And this nucleolus secretes or produces what we call ribosomal RNA. So this ribosomal RNA produces ribosomes. And the ribosomes are involved in protein synthesis. So let's look at it. When the nucleolus secretes the ribosomes, these ribosomes are released into the outside of the nucleus, which we call the cytoplasm. So these ribosomes attach to a structure that is also double membrane. This structure is called endoplasmic reticulum. Now, we have two types of endoplasmic reticulum based on if the ribosomes attach or if the ribosomes do not attach. So if ribosomes attach to an endoplasmic reticulum, it is called rough endoplasmic reticulum. If it do not attach to the endoplasmic reticulum, it is called smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Now, what is the function of rough endoplasmic reticulum? It is involved in protein synthesis, and it involves the transport of materials between the cytoplasm and the nucleus. So the movement of materials within the cell is carried out by endoplasmic reticulum. So please note that the movement of materials within the cell is carried out by the endoplasmic reticulum. Now, endoplasmic reticulum, rough in major, produces proteins and enzymes. Now, these proteins, when produced, they are packaged in a small structure, and this structure is called vesicles. So these vesicles transport the protein produced at the rough endoplasmic reticulum, transport it to a structure called the Golgi apparatus or the Golgi body. So what will the Golgi body do? Now, the protein that got to the Golgi body must be remodified because this protein does not really have a use when it was produced at the rough endoplasmic reticulum. But for the protein to have a particular function, it needs a 3D structure. So this third tertiary structure of protein is created by the Golgi apparatus. So the Golgi apparatus remodify the protein, add some other necessary materials that will make the protein function properly. So that is the function of the Golgi apparatus. Then after this protein has been modified, then the protein will be transported outside the cell for use. So what transports within the cell? Endoplasmic reticulum. What transports outside the cell? The Golgi apparatus. I hope you are following what we are doing. So now, another thing that the Golgi apparatus produces is lysosome. Now, lysosome are small structures that helps to degrade unwanted materials in the cell. So, for example, you have bacteria in the cell, you have worn-out cells in the cell. Then orange agents like the bacteria, they are carried by the lysosome. So, the lysosome contains what we call the digestive enzymes. So, these digestive enzymes will break down the unwanted bacteria and all of these things that you have and dish them out. So, it's degraded them by a process known as phagocytosis. So, the next structure to look at in the cytoplasm is the cytoplasm itself. So, we have left the nucleus, we are outside in the cytoplasm. So, the cytoplasm is a jelly-like fluid, a jelly-like structure that suspends every organelle. So, all organelles are dispersed inside the cytoplasm. So, the next thing to look at is a double membrane structure, which is called mitochondria. So, why am I talking like this? Why do I have the energy of talking? It comes from the mitochondria. So thank you, mitochondria, for being the powerhouse. Just like generator will power the house, mitochondria is powering your house too. And how does it do that? Mitochondria produces what we call ATP, adenosine triphosphate, by oxidative phosphorylation. So when you finish eating, there are a lot of things happen to the glucose that you are fed upon. And at the mitochondria, the final breakdown of the glucose will take place. And at the end of the day, you get adenosine triphosphate. So because the mitochondria produces energy, it is known as the powerhouse of the cell. And another structure we need to talk about is the chloroplast. The chloroplast contains green pigments called the chlorophyll. And this chloroplast is the, is the site of photosynthesis in plants. Another structure we have is what we call the vacuole. The vacuole is majorly present in plants. 
and it contains what we call the cell sap. It is usually involved in what we call osmoregulation, the regulation of the things that come into the plant cell and the things that leave the plant cells. So now, the, the, this vacuole is surrounded by a structure, a membrane called the tonoplasts. Please note all of these things and write them down. So pick them one after the other and write them down. So another structure to look at is what we call the centrile. The centrile is majorly found in animal cells and not in plant cells. So these centrils are majorly involved in cell divisions. That is mitosis and meiosis. It is involved in formation of spindle fibers. We're going to be talking more about that in later videos. So let's talk about the cell membrane. So the cell membrane, so we are moving now to the outside of the cell now. The cell membrane is a protective structure that separates the inner cell from the external environment. So things cannot easily move into the cell due to the presence of the cell membrane. The cell membrane is selectively permeable to things that we enter. So there are specific things that the cell membrane allows to enter and it is not all things that we enter. So the cell membrane is made up of the phospholipid bilayer, it's made up of proteins and carbohydrate. But the major components of the cell membrane is the phospholipid bilayer and some structures of proteins which serves as channel or which are known as integral proteins and peripheral proteins. So if they ask you what is the major component of the cell membrane, the cell membrane is made up of what we call the phospholipid bilayer. The cell membrane gives structural support and it maintains the shape of the cell. Now, there's another structure that is usually found in the plant cell and some other organisms. So this structure is called the cell wall. The cell wall gives rigidity, strength to the plant. It makes the plant to stand firm. So this cell wall is usually made up of what we call cellulose. We have the primary cell wall, the middle lamella, the secondary cell wall. We're going to be talking about more about the structure of the cell wall in later videos. So now, cell wall. The cell wall in plants is made up of cellulose. The cell wall in fungi is made up of chitin. The cell wall in bacteria is made up of peptidoglycan. Please note all of those things. Now that we know about all of these components of the cell, if there's any other part that we need to know, I'll tell you more about it. But note that there are three major parts that are common to all cells. It is the cytoplasm, the cell membrane, and the DNA. So let us differentiate between animal cells and plant cells. Animal cells usually have centrals. Plant cells do not have centrals. Animal cells do not have cell wall. Plant cells have cell wall. Plant cells have chloroplasts. Animal cells do not have chloroplasts. So there is presence of large vaco in plant cells. There is either absence or small vaco in animal cells. Because some animal cells are what we call the contractile vaco. So this is the end of it all. I'm going to be posting some questions on what I've said so far on the structure of plants and animal cells. So please study them and make sure you do very well. And please make sure you subscribe to our channel if you're finding this video useful. I'll be moving on to the next topic in biology, physics, and chemistry. So please help to share with students that might want to write JAM, YEC, NECO, SSC, or even A-levels. So please share with them, let them learn from the comforts of their own, and solve questions alongside. Please, every question I upload, make sure you solve. They are going to be jam pass questions from 1978 up to date. So solve them, and I'll see you in the next class.